I am really hoping that these specs are just rumors and not the actual spec of the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II because how can Panasonic be focusing on 6K 30 frames per second and not including 4K 120 frames per second on the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II? I'm truly hoping this is just rumors and they actually have 4K 120 frames per second similar to the Panasonic Lumix G86 and the Sony A7S III which was released two years ago. Come on Panasonic, we need 4K 120 frames per second. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel and boy I have some juicy information for you guys. Yes, the Lumix S5 Mark II specs were leaked and I have these specs and I will be sharing them with you guys. Let's dive right into this video, Siobhan Beckford style. Watcha! So as we all know the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, as the name suggests, is the successor to the Panasonic Lumix S5 which I'm shooting this video on right now and is currently my main camera for both photography and videography. So as it relates to a Mark II, we obviously expect better specifications, better performance, maybe looks cooler. You get the gist as it relates to a Mark II for any product. And I've got some specs right here from photorumors.com and I'll be reading these specs to you guys so I'll chop a little side over here on the video so you guys can see the specs as I go along. But please bear in mind guys these are still rumors, they are not released by Panasonic, these are not coming straight from Panasonic. These are just rumors and speculations and they might change, they might not change. At this point, I am 85% sure that there will be a Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II because Panasonic didn't say themselves. We are all just speculating at this point. Even though there is a great possibility that it will be the S5 Mark II, there is also that small chance that it might not be called the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. Now let me stop all this chit chatting and dive right into the specs that this new camera will be offering. And right off the bat we have 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor and I have no problem with a sensor being 24 megapixels because this is, as I always state, the sweet spot for videos and photos. To get high resolution photos you need higher megapixels to get amazing and clean well low light performing camera for videos you need low megapixels hence why the sony a7s3 is only 12 megapixels and that's why the panasonic lumix s1h is 24 megapixels and the s1r is 40 something because the s1r is for photography and the s1h is for videography even though the s1h can take photos and the s1r can record videos but they are specialized cameras. Moving right along, it has the good old dust reduction in the sensor, which is shift type, you know, you press clean sensor in the settings and it does that little shaking stuff to shake the dust off the sensor. Yeah, we'll be getting that on the Mark II. Video is, this is an upgrade. So for videos, we will be seeing an improvement of up to 6K at 30 frames per second in 420 10-bit color. And we also have cinematic 4K of up to 60 frames per second. But the upgrade to this is we'll be getting 422 10-bit color for C4K up to 60 frames per second on the Mark II. On the original S5, which I have currently, whenever you go up to 4K 60 frames per second, you will only be getting 420 10-bit color but on the Mark II you will be getting 422 10-bit color so that is more space to color grade and be creative with your videos. Going right along. For full HD we will be having 120 frames per second 420 10-bit and full HD 60 frames per second 422 10-bit. On the original S5, we had slow motion of up to 180 frames per second, but with recording this, we don't have audio and it's only in 1080p. It's not a setting that is baked into the original resolution menu, but on the S5 Mark II, it will be in the original settings menu and not in the S&Q mode 
where you will have full HD of up to 120 frames per second. Let me continue. And while you're still here guys, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and the like button so the algorithm can like me and I can also grow as a creator and continue to make amazing videos for you guys just like these. For the electronic viewfinder, we have 3.68 million dots. Those, these things don't really matter to me because I use a display. We will have a refresh rate of 120 frames per second. Yada 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 for the EVF for the display now. We'll be having three inches as usual. And we will be having 1.84 million dots on the touch panel of the screen of the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. And the aspect ratio will remain three by two similar to the S5 that we have here. We have autofocus method and this is another upgrade. We're seeing phase detection, but there's also a slash and there's contrast, autofocus, and also DFD. Now, I am wondering whether or not the camera will be selecting the autofocus method for us or we will be given the opportunity to choose whichever autofocus system we want to use with the camera. I hope once we switch over to videos, the camera will switch over to phase detection instead of contrast detection autofocus. And with photos, it will allow you to choose whether phase detection or contrast detection because on the Lumix S5, the original version, the contrast detection works 95% of the time. For me, with photography but videos, it tends to lose focus when I'm trying to lock on to subjects and when it lose focus it takes a while to lock back on with focus and you will even when it's locked on with focus it you will see pulsing in like the lights and like slight instances where it slips out of focus then jumps back in so I really hope they allow us to be using phase detection for videos and they can maybe keep contrast detection and allow us to use phase detection for photography because photography is fine it can be greater but it's fine for videos we definitely need phase detection trust me we need to keep up with the competition as it relates to autofocus sony canon <laughs> we we need to keep up moving right along we have 1728 zone multi-pattern metering a metering range of EVO to 18, ISO range of 100 to 51,200. But then I'm seeing in bracket there's an extension of 50 to 204,800. I'm guessing they will allow you to extend the ISO range on the Panasonic Lumix S5 um, from using the native 100 to 51,200 to an extended zone or range or whatever which is 50 to 204,800 so I'm not really sure how that will work but let's see how it goes so the S5 Mark II similar to its big brother the S5 will be having dual native ISO which was groundbreaking for the Lumix S5 I love the fact that I have 640 in vlog and then it's stacked sharp at 640 then I raise the ISO when I'm going up you will might see some noise but once I reach the 4000 it cancels out and I am crisp clean zero noise once more and I can continue going up again and then the noise will gradually come back instead of just noise from 640 right up. I love dual native ISO and more camera companies need to start implementing this amazing technology Lumix is using. So for normal ISO, the dual native ISO is 100 and 640. For Vlog, the dual native ISO is 640 and 4000. For HLG, the dual native ISO is 400 and 2500. I mainly shoot in normal mode and Vlog mode. So my dual native ISOs will be 100 to 640 for normal and 640 and 4000 for Vlog. There will also be 5-axis image stabilization in the Lumix S5 Mark II. Shutter 1 over 8000, you have mechanical shutter 1 over 2000, electronic shutter 1 over 8000, all these stuff we've seen on the Lumix S5. 
but then you have continuous shooting and that gives you up to nine frames per second now the buffer size we have 200 or more for raw plus jpeg photos and then 200 or more for raw only and 300 or more for jpeg only we're still seeing a usb type c port but in the lumix s5 mark ii we'll be seeing usb 3.2 we will have hdmi type a which was requested by a lot of videographers because the tiny hdmi port that we have on the original s5 that breaks hdmi cards so having a full size hdmi like what's on the s1h is thank you panasonic you're listening to us moving right along we will have dual sd card slot i'm hoping panasonic will allow us to use uhs2 cards like the two slots to be uhs2 and then it will allow you to use regular sd cards in them as well so please panasonic make both card slots uhs2 even though the camera is made already so whatever i'm requesting now is already been done so i'm just hoping they did it moving right along we have wi-fi and bluetooth like on the s5 and the battery life the battery life has decreased for the amount of shots you can get per battery compared to the original s5 this one is 370 shots per battery and the original s5 the first generation s5 was 400 and something i'm not sure how much but it was more than this i'm guessing because of the improved features and specs it might utilize more battery than the original s5 but I'm cool with that. I can get a battery grip, an external power source, or just have multiple batteries. So I'm good with that. So the weight of the Lumix S5 Mark II will be 657 grams. And that's the body only, no lens attached. This is a pretty light camera compared to the other cameras within the spec range in the camera industry, mirrorless lineup of camera industry. Not only were there rumors of a Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II, there are also rumors of a Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II X. So coupled with the Mark II, there is a, an X version or some special ops version, a higher tier version of the Mark IIs that will be releasing. And the specs on these, there are not many specs released on this X version of the Panasonic S5 Mark II but what I'm seeing here on the site is that it will have a 24 megapixel full frame sensor as well and it will shoot up to 6K 30 frames per second, the full size of the, the sensor. I don't understand though why both of these cameras the rumored specs are showing that 4k 60 frames per second will still be an APS-C crop like if they're shooting 6k 30 at the full frame why is 4k 60 still being captured at APS-C crop I don't understand I hope this is just a rumor and this is not the case and we will finally get to shoot the full frame in 4k 60 frames per second that crop is kind of annoying sometimes especially when i'm using a tight lens like 85 millimeter now for the s5 mark ii x what sets it apart from the regular mark ii is the ability for it to shoot apple prores now we're not sure what prores it will be recording whether it's 422 444 422 hq we're not sure the rumors are saying it will be able to capture apple prores internally and that's a game changer you don't need an external recorder to be recording prores and prores is a brilliant piece of codec it's phenomenal allows smooth workflow lossless quality and a lot of details even though it comes at a cost of a larger file size but the workflow and what you're getting is is a good trade-off for apple prores um the other specs from the mark ii x i see ip streaming function i don't really stream from my camera so that doesn't really help me but if you're into that kind of stuff it's coming to the Lumix Mark II X. Now, from what I'm seeing here, the specs from the Mark II X are not really that exceptional for me to take it up 
over the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II. So I will be keeping my anticipation to see the Lumix S5 Mark II more than the Lumix S5 Mark II X. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the specs I just shared about the Lumix S5 Mark II. These are rumors though, these specs weren't given by Panasonic. They are, as far as we know, assumptions. So I hope they pull through with some of these specs and some of these specs that are here are not the case and they actually added some upgrades such as we, we want 4K 120. If they could put 4K 120 on the Lumix G86, why can't they put it on the Lumix S5 Mark II? Why? So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more. I will be releasing more videos as I gather more information about the Lumix S5 Mark II and Mark II X. So you want to stay in the loop and be informed of whatever I get to salvage over the internet, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and the like button. I'm Siobhan Beckford, signing out.